be under ton marriage regency romance regency romance fiction novella copyright copyright cupinder of sunday september 16th 2016 15 935 words chapter one description two gorgeous brunette twins the spontaneous twin and conservative twin go to balls looking for husbands both are single 23 living their lives in camp london but soon their lives fall into the hands of the dangerous london underton valley of the downs medway road in camp england lady brenna hall s broom carriage early evening saturday june 15 1816 Lady Brenna Hall removed her beach bonnet matching her empire dress and slipper shoes the stockings on her legs felt sticky even with the powder used to ease her donning the garments their coachman Miles Caulfield drove them through the valley of the Downs in camped along the road by the Medway River beside a beautiful forest and lush foliage of which she and her impulsive younger by two minutes twin sister Lady Bethany Hall wrote on their way to yet another ball in search of husband's lady Brenna glanced from the window view to her younger sister, how beautiful and innocent looking she was, yet underneath her soft brunette curls and small nose ending in a naturally sculpted tip pointing to her cupid bow lips resided an indisciplined breath to say the least rescuing her younger twin sister from danger or scandal so many times Lady Brenna forgot the other venues and shires and now rescuing Lady Bethany S extended to balls and mansions and manors throughout Camp and London for the most part immediately Lady Bethany avoided responsibility and reacted to whatever emotional stimuli caught her fancy in Swoo. And fair Lady Bethany said after beating her feet on the floor of the broom carriage in rapid succession like a two-year-old and fair and fair and fair she said and waved her scandalous fan frantically before her face her fan showed a woman raising her hands over her updo hairstyle wearing a sheer white dress and half turning before a group of four men their eyes paying rapt attention to the voluptuous form of the woman as of her torso do not get married first Don T. I want Jeffrey Lawrence and Jeffrey Lawrence wants me pouted Lady Bethany Hall you know. It, noted, Lady Brenna laughed partly to fight off her guilt I met his brother Randolph first Bethany, if you had not been so busy playing cards in back rooms then, how can I meet men, if I don't he play cards. You want me to saunter around like hopeless Jennifer Miller flashing her ballroom decorated fan with the two crossed swords at the top people would avoid me like the plague Lady Bethany stopped waving the scandalous fan after a cutting look from Brenda I am not as good a dancer as you and you know ton member hostesses don't he want me dancing the first tier that is because you re-instant scandal I am not as bad as laced button Jennifer Miller how does she get into the balls anyway? All I want is Jeffrey in rapid succession Lady Bethany banged her feet against the broom coach floor rocking the vehicle as Miles asked is everything okay ladies? We refine fine shouted Lady Bethany just drive the sooner I get out of this carriage with my older sis the better Bethany Lady Brenna gasped I l l do anything to see you get a good marriage but you know two sisters can't he marry two brothers Lady Brenna turned away in disgust and part guilt Lady Bethany wore white slipper dancing shoes matching empire dress with a black band under her bosom that always attracted the eyes of the gentleman ton how about if I marry Randolph, that has a younger sister and older brother match, you marry. Jeffrey, that has an older sister and younger brother. Lady Bethany let out a guffaw laugh and tossed back her brunette head honestly Bethany that has no better Lady Brenna sighed she turned to her purse and pulled out another fan here. I love fans Lady Bethany said too fast before opening it up seeing a more respectable scene of couples holding hands from the opening end of the white fan to the closing other end. If dad hadn't he died somewhere in Austria last year in the Napoleon War killed by that military dictator with nine lives I'd be able to marry Jeffrey I doubt it your problem is you gambled away your portion of the estate dad left us you know how much work it is keeping those sir. 
servants in line picking the cherries, apples, pears, plums, gooseberries, the messy gooseberries. Strawberries. Though I miss the strawberries, I mean the servants never listen and you have to pay them even. When they don't you listen, you have to supervise them, Brenda, and supervise them. Do I have time for that? Remember it was you older twin sis who used to complain. When I rushed outside to play, when my hair wasn't he braided portrait perfect, I need to get married, not become a supervisor. They do good work, Bethany, dad and mom gave you that portion of the estate. Because you love to talk to people and socialize Lady Bethany let out a big sigh and fanned herself furiously George saves me the trouble of actually ordering them around he s such a good foreman Lady Bethany slashed her new fan downward dismissively after fanning herself not that kind of drudgery socializing I wanted something simple you regrowing oak and beech trees you plant them once and wait for 10-15 years. Before you have to work again your crops bring in as much as you gambled and lose every other month Bethany I am having a bad spell Brenna here let me show you something I met a man in London who showed me how to count cards Lady Brenna reached under the flip lid in the broom carriage and pulled out the smooth yellowing wooden board she placed it on her lap and across Bethany's lap thank you older twin said Bethany. As she cocked her head 20 degrees and batted her eyelids Lady Brenna replied the men love that look I bet makes them forget their card hands Brenna among other things Lady Bethany put on her serious face. Though her innocence cupid bow lip look never entirely vanished now I had dealt you five card stealing. Myself five cards she paused I half the dealer deck and give you one half Lady Brenna picked up the aunt objects. As if they might any second now scurry away along the broom's black carriage seat go under the floor out the door or under her beach empire dress these are playing cards Brenna not live snakes I mean cards can get slippery new decks anyway you've seen your hand right now pick up the other half of the dealer s deck on your side Lady Bethany waited she was known as the impulsive twin but that Never made any sense to Bethany she merely did what came to her mind some people waited decades to live their lives not Lady Bethany Hall I am looking I can't he spread them out far though they might all slip out of my hands spread your fingers like this Lady Bethany showed her empty hand now you have an ace of spades two of hearts four of clubs and four of diamonds two kings both black three jacks heart club and spade seven of diamonds and six of hearts Lady Brenna cautiously slowly spread her hands wider holding the second half of the dealer s deck her heart shaped face lit up and she blushed on both of her high cheeks her half crescent blue eyes studied cards from left to right cricket that s magic bethany it s not magic it s not witchcraft it s simply mathematics only so many cards in the deck from examining my hand and guessing the five cards you have i can know say 80 percent what s in your dealer half of cards oh my my bethany with your pluck no one you win so often and my and not share what s in my dealer deck and no card gamester splits the dealer deck but that s just to show you i do have other talents beside the feminine one of painting landscapes while lady brenna put the evil cards down people have tossed away their houses lands even titles using playing cards i don't he trust cards as a respectable ton occupation bethany but you agree, that s an amazing talent older twin sis I agree younger twin sis Lady Brenna always said, after her younger twin said older twin sis I can't stick to landscaping Lady Bethany cocked her head 20 degrees and batted her long dark lashes moreover many women are good at landscaping Bethany you re one of more than 30 handfuls of women landscapers Lady Brenna watched. As Bethany gathered up the cards in a fury stop I want to have you knocking down my talents you've always done that older sis you always were the good one.
perfectly neat and clean in your white dresses and and scratched knees I come in with dirty knees one time and mom and dad never ever forgave me Lady Brenna put the yellow card table Bethany's yellow card table back under the broom seat it never failed to shop Lady Brenna the difference in memories the two girls had mom and dad were mad because you chalked up five feet five inches of the east side of Hall Estate with a landscape painting that s. Why they didn't he forgive you it made the perfect canvas I needed to showcase. My talents besides it was a good drawing of the Downs Valley and the Medway River leading to London a good likeness just because I got on my knees in the dirt and gravel to draw the Medway River and scratched up my bloody them your long white dress had to take up shapes of blood on them your knees still hold the scars Lady Brenna leaned over and reached and pulled up Lady Bethany's white empire dress and pointed to her white stocking kneecap so I suppose you read going to tell me no man is going to marry me because of my scratched up knees now no Lady Brenna stop to consider how cruel that was I'd never say that you read going to get married Bethany I am not going to marry until I see you married first you don't you want to marry because I will I'll be penniless your husband Randolph will take whole estates and I will be a pauper living in mom's house I will I'll have nothing left except my landscaping ability to play cards and my love of water and beaches. Thank God Dad put the land and house in an entitlement to the Tristy Wilson Chadwick. Until you are married Brenna our evil nephew can't he steal our land and haul estate sending us both to Aunt's house Dad may have liked you more than the older twin sis but he was a smart man he understood ton rules of finance we re safe Bethany I don't he have to rush and marry some old ugly duke or something who wants a boring wife Bethany you are not going to marry some old ugly dukeling Lady Brenna laughed don't he forget your love of the theater to Lady Bethany joined in the giggling ugly dookling can I use bet at the card game tonight ugly dookling lady Bethany narrowed her eyes back to serious matters you like the theater no reason that we can tea both like the theater I want a life of my own Bethany hated the fact she and her older twin sis were almost tied wrists to wrists this Bethany understood encouraged her rebelliousness she wanted to be people to know her as Bethany Hall not the younger twin sister of Brenna Hall I can he called the mirror image of my older twin sis as character traits all my life in as bad enough I look like you and people think I am conservative like you I am my own person is that why Bethany you go out of your way to act and do risky things Lady Brenna grew mad flirting with Duke Drake turned to Lady Brenna said in a hushed tone he put Lady Ellen Evil in the hospital after leaning forward Lady Brenna asked you want me visiting you in the hospital your face all battered your limbs bruised and blue Lady Bethany said after leaning forward better than you visiting me on White Chappelle selling my laced button like a clergyman ass daughter to the highest bidder of the night we don't he know what happened exactly to Dowager Ellen Turnbull I heard he said she fell down the stairs of Turnbull Manor and now she is in the hospital he has got at least four stories of stairways in his princely castle Lady Brenna closed her eyes in frustration the divorce between Lady Ella Turnbull is not even final and Yuri Yuri already calling her Dowager you court disaster Bethany give up that waving Randolph and let me marry Jeffrey first you can always find another husband I want mine. You know nothing about love Bethany Randolph and I are in love I found him first and according to the Catholic Orthodox Catholic and Jewish religions once a sibling marries an unrelated family sibling all all the other siblings are then related by marriage I know all about double in law marriage older twin sis I just Lady Brenna cut off her younger twin sis no way was older twin Lady Brenna going to let Bethany marry Jeffrey first first come first so first marriage I know Randolph waves to people all the time I find it cute not annoying he and I want you to marry marry well Bethany but not to Jeffrey this whole inheritance thing harms the second born lady Bethany's pat and jostled 
as the carriage went over a rock you saw how Jeffrey and I got along so well at the park yesterday sorry about that your graces Miles Caulfield yelled didn't he see the rocky part of Medway Road coming after the turn hall was a bit tricky this part but we re nearly to a lady felony ass dance ball. The air cooled a bit between the two female aristocrats. I am sorry Bethany you rewrite the second born has to make their own way into the gentry world, and if you were a man it'd be easy but as a woman, I have only one option to get married marriage every woman has only option Bethany I met an American woman aristocrat visiting named Violet Hollier she says in America they did away with all those rules I can marry Jeffrey there and no one would blink an eye Lady Bethany stuck out her chin Violet Hollier H and 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 M. Randolph mentioned her last week she runs an American fashion house I am too short to be a model by two inches Though I could be a great woman landscape painter in America Brenda I know I can and I also met a man by the way in London Sterling I think he is sweet on me in the marrying sort of way he agrees with me I should marry Jeffrey in America and forget all this tongue customs and tradition Lady Bethany started crying Crippy Bethany you re might win I can TC sending you all the way to America and never see you again Lady Brenda tried to slip some humor into their conversation. How would I do my hair with my mirror being across the Atlantic Ocean? What does it matter? Lady Bethany said crying more I'd be happily married in America you can have Randolph Lady Bethany sniffled Lady Brenna held out a white handkerchief she retrieved from her beach handbag cunt has enough rivers and tributaries Bethany everything s going to be alright Lady Brenna's eyes started to grow heavy with water the brims of her blue eyes held back the wetness threatening to ruin her white face makeup now my white mask is all destroyed Lady Bethany groaned here let me fix it for you Bethany remember when we first tried to put on our white masks at age 14 we were so happy then Lady Brenna kept patting dry Lady Bethany's makeup before putting on more masks and rouge remember when you first wore a full ball dress corset and you complained how uncomfortable limiting clothes were, how the corset made it hard to play. Lady Bethany sniffled yes older twin sis and mom came in and said now all those boys who did not let you play ball with them will have to beg to get your attention at the country dance balls and louder faces Bethany lit up for joy as fate turned in our favor we made the boys who pestered us wait and wait and wait for a dance. The two twin brunette aristocrat women leaned back on their half of the black broom carriage and chortled. To be young again, said Lady Brenna, to be free again, said Lady Bethany. Both 23-year-old young ladies stood 5 feet 5 inches, their respective mates Duke Randolph and Jeffrey Lawrence stood 5 feet 8 inches each both a perfect temperament for the other twin, Randolph being more outgoing than Lady Brenna and Lady Bethany more outgoing than the more conservative honorable Jeffrey to bad felony Welch got her a watch necklace wrapped around Jeffrey's neck Lady Bethany said in a mournful tone you know he really don't doesn't he love her one with Brenna not one with Jeffrey s got the money to pay off my debts he s got money and land to spare Lady Brenna patted her blue eyes once more her younger twin sister s point yet another guilty spot in Lady Brenna s duck I really want us to be merry and get on with having children I look forward to having two or three right away settling into being a mom I don't you want children Brenna I want a husband and I am going to get a husband to one way or another Lady Bethany scornfully without rolling her eyes scowling and snapping her fan at her younger sister only encouraged her rebellion her younger twin sis was so stubborn. She was going to do something rash yet again Lady Brenna thought remorsefully maybe she de Mary Duke Drake turned to the only man paying attention to her these days that unexpected Jeffrey to marry Lady Felony Welch, however Lady Brenna could do little to change the matter. 
Miles Caulfield called out we reached Felony Mansion when the air cleared between Bethany and her lady Brenna felt a little better dancing will make us forget all this drama we ll listen to the music, you will listen to the music lady Bethany said gathering her purse the non-scandalous fan and putting her cards in her bag I hope Jeffrey my true love is there tonight you ll be pleased to know Randolph said they both planned to attend Felony S ball he practically has to attend because of that felony trash felony trash or not. Is done like the rest of us Bethany please don't he go inside her home causing scandal innocent and plucky lady Bethany flashed a big smile long as she does not he hang all over my Jeffrey and drool I help help be the perfect aristocratic lady at the card table. Announced the doorman, Lady Brenna and Lady Bethany Hall are in attendance good we made it here, before the first tier selections whispered Lady Brenna are you surprised? Lady Bethany said scornfully Miles is the most efficient coachman we met had in years hello Lady Brenna Lady Bethany said Randolph Lawrence waiting inside the felony estates talking with a group of men in finance I was talking with a group of finance men about selling your oaks and beech trees for a good price why Duke Lawrence that is very kind of you Lady Brenna kept her eyes on his deep blue eyes my sister and I discussed the trees on the way over it should be about time. In two months I told him we de cut down. Only half letting the rest grow even thicker producing a better wood. Oh you mean cut down the other trees. After we remarried I want you to have all the income you need before we join and I know your younger twin does he want us to marry soon. Sadly no Duke Lawrence. They both turned to watch Lady Bethany say her few hellos and her cordial hellos the beautiful heart-shaped face aristocrat turned to see Jeffrey Lawrence across the country dance ballroom by the Regency band Jeffrey stood talking with one the male players Jeffrey turned and froze and his face locked onto a Lady Bethany's heart-shaped face Bethany found herself unable to look away even though a few men grumbled and some older women gasped Bethany felt alone isolated, as if only Jeffrey and her existed until the slender full white opera gloves stroked. Across Jeffrey's broad shoulders and broke the magic oh well, Bethany replied Brenna with sadness. However Randolph took another view someone once said to me don't he knock love just love with all your heart but this is scandal Randolph Bethany can't get hurt. Jeffrey honey I need help with the refreshments it is so good you and your brother Randolph are in attendance some very important guests from American and London are in town she said in a gentle sweet voice Jeffrey looked in the green eyes of Lady Felony as she led him into the back kitchen area. Lady Bethany said a bearded man with blue eyes and a square face his face gleamed white. As a judge I hear you requite the card player a woman he half bowed to be reckoned with in danger or peace time Lady Bethany teetered laughter but felt nothing of the sort being pulled away from her love she felt the groundedness of being brought back to unreality Jeffrey was gone to the kitchen and a man who spent time in the kitchen with his woman endured a scolding or another dose of women's love magic kisses in any case. He did be reminded available a lady felony waited for him to pop the question and she dc to his pleasure. In the meantime I am a woman of peace to turn but I do love the war of cards. Shall you take me to the back card lair or do you want me to fight our way through the infantry cavalry and officers and ladies of war? Lady Bethany fluttered her conservative fan showing couple after couple. By all means said Duke Drake turned will you show me the way I adore a plucky woman of substance Lady Bethany wanted to ask. What happened to Dowager Ella Turnbull but this was neither the time nor the place and Duke Drake had a lot of money to lose to Bethany tonight. In horror Lady Brenna gasped as the two scandalous ton members walked back toward the double panel dark Jerry Wood door the card gamester door and disappeared. Chapter 2 Felony Estates back card room behind the country dance hall evening Saturday June 15, 1816. Lady Bethany chuckled I do believe I am out of funds what a shame said Duke Drake in a mocking tone. 
if Miss Violet Collier was here, as in the last game perhaps Duke Drake leered at Lady Bethany across the card table the American cunt would lend you some funds I paid Miss Violet Collier back all she lent me, when I won that last hand Bethany paused you do remember Duke Drake I remember, that they found a key to the language of the pyramids in S called the Reset Stone it deciphered all those mysterious Egyptian. Hieroglyphics everyone at the card table carefully watched the two scandalous ton members cricking that is a surprise Lady Bethany thought Duke Drake graciously changed the subject I am much too simple a girl tell me what it says she cocked her head 20 degrees and batted her blue eyes her heart shaped face and chiseled nose pointed to her slightly pouting cupid bow lips love the reset stone talked about love Lady Bethany teetered all I know is cards landscape and gee hasn't he everything been said about love Duke Drake? Not love between a man and a woman, not yet what has left? You and me talking love, when I find out I l l tell you Lady Bethany you want me to wait 3500 years? For what love or talking about love? I can talk about love right now until the sun comes up but then what will the rest of us do? About the reset stone as information the sun or talking about love? Maybe Duke Drake cleared his throat we should talk finances I never talk finances without my twin older sister Lady Brenna Shall I escort you back to the country dance hall why Duke Drake I am not going anywhere you think I can run far in my dance shoes even with their white rubber band straps horses run fast in iron shoes carriages run even faster on four wheels I think we need to come to terms about your debt to be I l l pay your debt Lady Bethany said quietly in the quiet room which did not stop anyone. From hearing their conversation I always do they both waited they kept waiting Bethany searched the faces of each of the card players. All remained silent. Duke Drake clasped his hands in front of his face and leaned his elbows on the card table I thought our talk of love capable of solving the entire matter Drake I can marry you to settle the debt. Lady Bethany I am not a mysterious woman, I am being straightforward marry me and I forget the debt I want a dowry to you spent it you have been spending it for the last two years Lady Bethany waited paused hoping again for some ton member a woman or man interfered and paid her debt someone always gave her a helping hand even Duke Drake however none stepped forward though. Lady Bethany pushed back her wooden chair and rose I need some fresh air you know what so do I suddenly Duke Drake said in an ominous tone. Everyone kept their lips sealed. Lady Bethany thought perhaps her forward stare at Jeffrey sealed her doom no ton member wanted to support a woman who would steal another ton woman as potential husband creepy her situation grew more dangerous and precarious every second. Her white empire dress clung to her backside and Lady Bethany noticed Duke Drake as hungry eyes staring at it, as they walked out into the narrow hall leading to the country dance hall. Immediately Lady Bethany and Duke Drake heard the loud card game players resume playing joking and laughing. They took two steps. When Duke Drake slammed Lady Bethany to the wall he put both his hands on either side of her shoulders then he leaned his bearded face closer and said I like a woman who fights back but knows she is defeated, before she begins I never fight back, unless I intend to win Duke Drake and I haven't he decided whether I want to win against you, yet you could be a nice man and not a brute my sweet dear you can play the conservative bible wife and not the spontaneous independent witch. Lady Bethany found her situation stupid I do not find being threatened romantic for readers of trashy romance novel it may sound fun to be threatened beat up and put in the hospital perhaps and have her hospitalization explained. As A. U. Duke Drake put forth this explanation when someone on vacation inquired about his wife Lady Bethany wasn't he buying it where does an English woman living in England catch malaria?
those trashy romance readers can celebrate the woman as injuries from a handsome dude that take painful months to heal but I assure you dude Drake real life woman like myself not conservative woman of pluck. As I am abhor this sort of thing it is repugnant Lady Bethany wanted to turn her face away from the fader smell of his Cuban cigar breath the black band under her bosom pressed on her flesh. As she steadied her breathing she noticed a tendril of her brunette hair loose about her right ear. Everything in her body told her not to act feminine. And sweep it back into place with her other hairs on her head it sets women back a thousand years each time it happens each time a woman or heaven forbid a girl reads a trashy romance novel and potentially turns into a willing fated future victim of male malice real women cringe in fear Duke Drake said with deceptive calm you are afraid I am pleased and I know why you rethinking how does an English woman catch a you? Ships ships from the Caribbean bring back aguarets and people bring them back feasting on their blood Lady Bethany knew at this moment she and Drake formed a failed romantic relationship he had a reasonable answer for everything she'd be running off in the night to a ship on the nearby Thames. For America marriage be damned I like being a woman do Drake however I date wearing so many clothes and learning to be afraid of men that is why I am different from all the other ton women I don't he played by the rules I never liked it. When the boys tried to bully me in my youth so I do not care if the man finds my fighting back and fair. Do Drake pulled back his hand. Reacting quicker Lady Bethany raised her knee to his groin and escaped. Duke Drake grunted loudly and crouched bending low in pain Duke Drake reached out and grabbed Lady Bethany missing her white empire dress his hand entangled her white bag the playing cards spilled out over the narrow hallway wait Duke Drake turned will struggled and managed to call out Bethany, Lady B. Any Lady Bethany smoothed the loose brunette wisp of hair back with the others behind her ear and waited close to the exit door to the country ball dance hall she heard as she goes playing her sister Brenna. S favorite country dance song. Not entirely undone Duke Drake pulled himself together he reached his full six foot height he was a big man but not overweight he had big hands and one of his hands could easily canvas over Lady Bethany's heart shaped face walking slowly to Lady Bethany he shuffled forward finally his groin healed you re a card counter gangster I knew it so you may be a card counter too for all I know I bet a proposition. For you we play together his light blue eyes sparkled wickedly no one must know we re a team but between us counting. The cards we will always win sometimes I l l let you win sometimes you let me win has an end skeptical Lady Bethany said the winnings. Duke Drake cleared his throat we split 50-50 equally a man and a woman in cunt society acting equally she scoffed and laughed I am not so evil a man Lady Bethany believe me there are worse gentlemen in the underton in London lending out money I am an angel compared to them underton. You've never heard it, because you don't you want to hear it many ton members are in debt to them yeah they get to keep their titles fancy houses land and servants but they pay through the nose in interest he adjusted his male coach white cravat go on do drake a hem he pulled on his black beard being honest I do will never work. Unless we were married see we can develop several code words to let each other know the cards we hold between the two of us we can count the rest Lady Bethany's eyes widen you. Are a card cheat careful Bethany your words make you a card cheat too. The offer seemed tempting only the marriage part held Lady Bethany back we must get married. Duke Drake looked at Lady Bethany's shiny brunette hair in the abdo such a pretty face and that knot on your head is just the epitome of tongue class it makes for an easy target to grab, though the Lady Bethany's pat why are you threatening me? I want us to partner in this, card sharking I have a choice no you don't he marry me or else what happens when we tire of winning other people's money? We go off to the Caribbean or some other place to gamble and start again that s. While Lady Ella is in the hospital she wanted to quit.
Twin Bethany never fully accepted the truth first she wanted Lady Ella to be a dowager, when it suited her purpose to date Duke Drake, now impulsive Bethany needed for Ella to still be Duke Drake as wife. As their divorce was not finalized, yet Bethany needed a reason to refuse to break offer of marriage cards and gambling no she refused to play. Lady Bethany instantly changed her mind, if you lay a hand on me I'll help scream and everyone from here to Lancashire will know you harmed me to break chuckled that may be exciting to you but I assure you no one will care. Lady Brenna got a bad feeling, as she waited in line for her second turn dancing in the pair of six couples she had danced several complete dances, before I can to Randolph this is your favorite country dance song we read in the middle of the dance I need to find my twin sister said Lady Brenna nervous and scared your sisters is like a scorpion or a needle or a snake she ll strike her enemies whomp away to victory or bite the heel threatening her she ll land in a pit of her her worse enemies I promised. My dad ID take care of her Lady Brenna broke away and marched straight through the dance line through the crowd of people who envied her popularity and into the six panel dark wooden door. Bethany what s going on everything was concluding I was just saying good night to my good friend Duke Drake from Dover Camp Duke Drake so you think you be a kinmaker like the Greys I know what you do you beat your wife and put her in the hospital live Duke Drake said calmly she has a you fever chills no one will believe a woman who was clumsy all her life throughout childhood even Bethany did you lose money to him? Lady Bethany held back the growing water in her eyes no one wanted to help me out like last time I believe Lady Felony turned all the ton card players against me Lady Bethany sniffled Lady Brenda used the excuse to snatch Lady Bethany further away from the towering Duke Drake OS jaw twitched in anger she owes me 10,000 pounds 10,000 Bethany he let me play on his credit. I want my money or do Drake smiled we can form a cooperative partnership Bethany what kind of partners cards Lady Bethany looked nervously to do Drake for a second and she decided not to reveal the entire scheme I may have to go through with it Brenna unless you lend me the money. Lady Brenna whispered back you know I cannot get that can of money fast without selling off the trees Duke Drake raised his chin and raised his voice nice oaks and beach be worth more money in a few years but I do take them now if need be I ll pay you back Lady Bethany exclaimed knowing she had no way to get the money. Lady Brenna wanted to know the full deal her younger twin sister plan with dangerous Duke Drake. I'll get you your money, what else Bethany? He proposed marriage, if I agree to play cards for a hobby Lady Brenda started to speak and Lady Bethany threw her right hand over her mouth tell no one, if I marry him it must be a secret marry him Lady Brenna whispered outraged older twin sis it as the only way younger twin sis no it isn't he not. For you Brenna I am broke broke we ll work something out Lady Brenna whispered to her sister Bethany Drake my sister will let you know in 10 days if she ll accept your proposal of marriage 5. Bethany replied hum 5. Drake. You be a very talented little tongue innocent with your heart shaped face and cupid bow lips you de make the perfect little wife and by the way our marriage has to be public for the ruse to work he clasped his two big hands together I promise Lady Bethany we want to have children for at least five years you disgust me Lady Brenda said careful about how you talk to your future tongue in laws Drake not a word to anyone Lady Bethany replied raising her voice over the louder applause in the country dance ball and the backroom card den. Not until you hear from me. Drake sauntered back down the narrow hall he paused before opening the card den door and stared at Lady Brenna and Lady Bethany he mouthed the words silently five days then he opened the private card door and went inside. The 5 foot 5 inch tall aristocratic twins looked alike in all respects with their half crescent eye sculpted nose cupid bow lips but Lady Bethany looked innocent somehow, while Lady Brenna looked seasoned and wise. 
Bethany, how can you do this to me to yourself to us? I was sure I had a winning hand he counts cards like me she shrugged her shoulders Lady Brenna flashed a look of scorn to her younger twin you should play conservatively until you got really good at card counting you trusted your card counting abilities too much Lady Brenna put her heart shaped face into her hands this day is too much her muffled voice said this is the too much day I feared happening and it is finally here. Lady Bethany reached out tentatively to brush her old twin sister's shiny brunette hair up to all her life. Lady Bethany wanted to free herself of being a burden to her older twin sister. Now she did done the worst thing to them both lead them to financial disaster. Unless I can marry Duke Drake at one T mean anything to me Brenna I am a tough girl I can forget my forbidden love for Jeffrey obliviously it is what got me into deep trouble tonight I must have offended the ton by staring too long at Jeffrey when we first arrived and Lady Felony retaliated by bad mounting me it is all my fault. Lady Brenda snapped her head back up from her hands we need to go home this instance and let me think about this crypty Bethany this will destroy us both I l l have to marry Randolph first and that will leave you with nothing unless he gives me back Hall Estates so I can let you live there until you re safely married. I have five days to think over his decision he is attractive he beat Ella and put her in the hospital Lady Brenna whispered scream you think an English woman can get malaria in England. That is a lie he told to hide what he did to her Duke Drake said the mosquitoes bring you from the Caribbean ships they feed on rats and people. Even though Duke Drake's decision sounded reasonable Lady Brenna shook her head in disbelief come on twin younger sis let us get out of here. Lady Brenna and Lady Bethany put fake smiles on their faces Lady Brenda said good night to several dancers and Lady Felony and Randolph Hall Lady Bethany flashed a worried look to Jeffrey before quickly glancing away before anyone noticed. Even worse Lady Bethany felt bad and stupid her own impulsive behavior and taking far far too many chances in betting led her to ruin. If she only practiced card counting and placed conservative bets, if she only refused Duke Drake's financial offer this time for once things would be different she mourned not being able to marry Jeffrey, even if that marriage was a long shot now her dreams of going to America with Jeffrey seemed far out of the question she de endured scandals before to achieve financial gains but now she overplayed her hand. Lady Brenna wanted to scream she wanted to cry she wanted to shake her younger twin sister by her shoulders but what good would that do? The fact that the Reset Stone was found in Egypt, as Randolph said meant little love was the greatest mystery and now her love for Randolph would be tainted by the pressure of outside forces she needed to find the money to pay damning Duke Drake off it was out of the question to let her younger twin sister enter into a dangerous card partnership marriage lot if the card play went south. What if he demanded Bethany play better and pressured her threatened her. No material love lasted, unless the woman had a serious duty no man could do all Brenna knew was cooking and landscaping going to beaches and rivers and playing cards. Lady Brenna sat in her broom carriage, as Miles Caulfield drove them both back through the dark forest trees of the downs she sat in fear of the inevitable selling the entire estate Mary Randolph getting a loan from Randolph would destroy any future marriage civility her only choice left securing a loan from the London underton Jennifer Miller mentioned to her over drinks at the refreshment table a sterling upshot. The underton a group of scandalous legal loans with high interests that involve a secret trip to London and a denial of any trip to everyone Bethany Randolph Jeffrey or any of the ton, as the lady Jennifer Miller suggested. Chapter 3 Hall Estates Front Door Main Building Faversham Camp England Morning Wednesday June 19, 1816 Four days Lady Brenna and Lady Bethany went over their options until finally the mysterious man named Sterling resurfaced. 
Lady Brenda sat on the yellow living couch in the drawing room everything from the curtains to the settee to the tablecloths covering the round tables in the corners where small congregations of people played cards or sipped to was yellow large portraits of their parents faced the west windows but a large gold frame portrait on the north wall held Prince Regent George IV starring out majestically as if he could solve the lady's problems. Lady Bethany sat down reluctantly ready, as she was to go and face Duke Drake and decline his offer you do think the Prince Regent lent us a helping hand he knows all about gambling debts from what I hear Lady Brenna glanced at Prince Regent as picture even with his debts no one is going to be threatening him with harm or taking the royal palace. When you think about all his problems with the crown managing the victory over Napoleon and the negotiations for European land and possessions quietly taking place he hardly think of us ton members especially. Us women ton, we ought to be pleased enough of the men returning home to marry some of the men Brenda some Lady Bethany fanned herself. Even though the tall ceiling of the yellow drawing room, as they called it kept a cool temperature I had been thinking Bethany Lady Brenna kept her posture straight careful not to lean back on the couch ass back you cannot marry him, to Drake a man who would lie and say his wife has aid you to isolate her from people visiting and giving her well wishes is no man to be exchanging marriage vows with. He cannot be trusted and at the felony s country dance ball I ran into a woman of ill repute, a prostitute at felony Welch s country dance ball a lady Bethany in her white empire dress with tiny pink roses around the trim chortled and kicked up her white slipper heels a little too high for modesty and laughed her head off doesn't he that beat all things? Scandal at the pristine perfect felony Welch country dance ball I am a bit curious as to how that happened myself chuckled Lady Brenna, however Jennifer told me something interesting, while we both took refreshments what? What could a laced button have interesting to say? Lady Bethany kept a wide grin on her heart-shaped face you l l find this interesting to Lady Bethany stopped laughing about money. Lady Brenna nodded her co brunette had her blue eyes coldly fixed on her younger twin sister Bethany. I am listening answered Lady Bethany she said she had an eye for noticing when a ton worried over money matters in fact she attended these country dance balls under the guise of offering financial advice to the ton Lady Bethany opened her eyes wide and then gasped audibly the man named Sterling. I l l get to that Bethany Jennifer works for what she called the Underton they rebased in London in the exchange building they have a smaller quieter office in Soho where Bartitsu John trains nobles to fight off ruffins and where the famous foil fencing master Angelo Palavolti Tremamondo he s the personal fencing master of the Prince Regent I know Bethany when she told me that I lent more weight to Jennifer s words before I allowed myself to be amused between dances and social gossip many nobles attend Angelo S. Fencing Academy, for fencing teaching practice and exhibitions Jennifer said this man Sterling Upshaw, so Upshaw is his last name, exclaimed Bethany I am glad you didn't he know his last name. Chasing you down in London from visiting him frightens me Lady Bethany let a wrinkled smile of guilt appear on her face I entertained the idea of seeking Sterling out Don T. Jennifer said Sterling up shop as yes a ruthless and logical mind he won't he break a contract once you've a sign you had better deliver on your terms and payments such a beautiful and sweet. Looking girl caught up in the London underton she reminds you of everyone as baby sister who is about to make her debut except for the two golden crossed swords on her ballroom decorated fan their sign she has nothing of the sort imagine she is allowed in country dance balls of the highest caliber we attend public balls but on King Street London exclusive private subscription balls of ton are held each Wednesday night of the season the patronesses of Almag S assembly rooms Lady Bethany sat up on the edge of her seat I bet always wanted. 
To go to the Almagas Lady Brenna scoffed you must get a voucher and you have to personally know one of the seven powerful society hostesses who organize it you think you got on the wrong side of Lady Felony last night Lady Brenna scoffed again and fanned herself slowly you get on the wrong list of these patronesses of Almagas and you LL never be invited to a ball again that ass how lace button Jennifer Miller gets invited to all these country dance Balls Lady Bethany exclaimed I always fretted over her only the cream D. La cream of society can attend the Almac. The Duke and Duchess Seabrood Marchioness Abra and Marquis York the gambling girl Countess Cecilia Moore and her husband Cecilia Moore people say I am like her fun a plucky risk taker Bethany these people were involved in matters of the highest in ton life some say Duke Seabrood gas involvement goes all the way up to the Prince Regent and his dad George III Lady Bethany said sadly George III the man who won he died but his dad this Jennifer Miller is one of them the London Under. Ton for every ton member she directs to Sterling Upshaw she gets a percentage of the profits a small one and a half percent but that on ten thousand dollars is a lot interest is probably included Lady Bethany hurriedly added yes interest Jennifer mentioned interest a hefty twenty five percent twenty five percent you are glad you didn't he know his last name H and and M Lady Brenna emphasized her point Bethany nodded I ignored her offer most Mostly until your annex in the card then forced me to remember Jennifer Miller S offer I am going to London to visit this Sterling Upshaw you can't he Brenna I want to let you you can't he stop me I can't by marrying Duke Drake. Lady Brenna S face turned angry I L L take the risk I want he have you suffering in the hospital from a you a Lady Bethany stood up and said I can handle one man. But if you go and get involved with the London Underton we may never see the end of it. They be a group of dangerous people. Duke Drake Turnbull is just one dangerous man. Wait I already have Miles waiting to take me to London. Lady Brenna said chasing her younger twin sister. Hall Estate 6 panel black door open Lady Bethany came out and stood surprised smiling Duke Randolph waved from the window of his black broom carriage parked behind Lady Brenna's carriage Lady Bethany did not wave back she hated waving to people seconds later Lady Brenna came outside behind her older twin sister and gasped Lady Bethany turned to her older twin sister well you can't go to London and I can't go see Duke Drake no 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 Lady Brenna quick stepped out to the black broom carriages Randolph said in his quiet soft voice hello my love I understand you need a ride to London who told you? Let us say a friend of a friend Lady Felony Randolph continued but I can I'll take you Brenna unless you promise to take Lady Bethany to the Almac as he grinned you have to give your younger twin sister something to live. For distract her from Duke Drake turned to Lady Bethany walked calmly up to her twin sister S black broom carriage and opened the door Bethany I want you to come with me and Randolph to London whatever for to save you from ruining your marriage prospects no one will want you. After Duke Drake Turnbull has abused and shattered your spirit no man has the power to shatter a woman's spirit replied Lady Bethany with fury I don't he played my men's rules remember? Bethany indulge me for once Randolph put into the aristocrat sister's argument I know I've never been kind to you for wanting to marry my younger brother before I married Lady Brenna Duke Drake turned to S home Miles commanded Lady Bethany tilting her head up denying Randolph any sympathy as she stepped into the carriage Miles do not start that carriage shouted Lady Brenna whatever you say Miss Brenna start the carriage Miles ordered Lady Bethany Miles held still. Do, as I say Miles Caulfield, this instant Randolph gave the order for his coachman to drive up to Lady Brenna's carriage. When the coachman pulled beside it Lady Brenna opened Randolph's carriage door for Bethany Bethany you've always wanted to see the highest of the ton I had decided we both should do just that Lady Bethany's blue eyes widen you, you read going to get a voucher for the Almac as yes you want to come? Won't he miss it for the world? 
We're going to have a wonderful time Bethany and maybe you LL need a ton to core Marquis or count that you fancy getting into a Randolph S. Carriage Lady Bethany's attitude changed and surely a ton to Marquis or count may meet and fancy me too. Lady Brenna smiled at Randolph Lady Brenna had to stop her younger twin sister from being possibly raped beaten and who knows what else in declining Duke Drake turned OS marriage offer, if they were to deal with tragedy let them deal with it together, as sisters united they needed to go and deal with this London underton thing together with Randolph accompanying them they would be extra safe as well. I am so sorry for your difficulties with Lady Felony's guests in the car Den Randolph started out my brother is furiously mad at her it took several hours for me to calm him down I don't he know what he could do but when my younger brother wants something he never stops until he gets it he s one successful guy he wants to marry me Randolph that s what Jeffrey really wants. And all this time I thought you were jealous for Randolph Lady Brenna wide. All of them laughed together. Lady Bethany fanned herself and looked out the window first before turning back I always wanted Jeffrey and Jeffrey always wanted me Duke Randolph tossed up his hands and let them slap on his black thigh pants. If I had to predict anything it would go like this. You and my brother run off to America get married and live happily ever. After the end Lady Bethany gasped CC Brenna he understands love he gets it I told you Jeffrey loves me Lady Brenna looked shocked my Duke Randolph please do not encourage such wild future fantasies. My younger twin sister doesn't he know anything about America Jeffrey has been to America two times already he s very comfortable in New York being the second son he felt encouraged to work. Even though he owns enough wealth not to in some ways the second siblings has it easier than the first, they are not so tied down by tradition and customs. Lady Bethany grinned for the first time in her life things began to make sense she never followed the rules. Second siblings didn't he have to follow the rules she wanted to marry Jeffrey a second sibling. Jeffrey can actually marry her in America she wanted to paint landscapes in America not being a ton she could do just that I want to paint landscape paintings in America Randolph tell Jeffrey about that Lady Bethany hoped her double message slipped by her older sister. Lady Brenna looked serious at Randolph when this underton business is finished I want us to be married right away okay Brenna I am not confused I love you more than anything and anyone else in the world which is why I cannot let you go to London alone not to visit the underton anyway I have some connections in London in case things go bad all I need is ten thousand dollars Lady Brenna said coolly adding I cannot tame our relationship I asked you for it Randolph Lady Bethany rapidly beat her white slipper shoes on. The carriage floor like a spoiled breath that would make her a hypocrite, saying I cannot get the money from Duke Drake and then she gets the money from you and I don't you want our relationship Lady Brenna to be marred by anything Duke Randolph said picking up and clasping Lady Brenna's left hand. Lady Brenna leaned over and kissed Randolph. Lady Bethany looked on sickly, as her older twin sister s heart shaped face meshed with Randolph's oval face his pencil black mustache rubbing sensuously against Brenna's upper lip he had black hair and no beard his gentle voice, though all was irritated Bethany Jeffrey wore a handlebar mustache and possessed a deep masculine voice and no beard both men's oval faces looked serene as an opera singer. Ahem ahem Lady Bethany felt compelled to interrupt them other people in this carriage may be lonely for right now anyway you two can find a hotel while I attend the Almac S ball tonight. Lady Brenna broke her kiss with her bow reluctantly she simply wanted to reinforce she was marrying Randolph first however much the guilt of meeting Randolph first pulled at Lady Brenna's heart first see first love remained her rule on relationships. How different might their lives have been, if Bethany married Jeffrey first and left for America, as seems they were destined to do?
then she and Randolph could quietly marry and live happily ever after in England. Randolph's carriage rode for a while, until they crossed over into a London from Kemp familiar sights and sounds and the fashionable people of London really sparked Lady Bethany's spirit I love London I always did even when we were young. You remember when mom and dad brought us to the horse track near Breno Lady Brenna batted her eyes you mean the Asilias Royal Amphitheater or the Aska Racecourse? Yes um, where the guy rode around on horseback you mean the Asilias Royal Amphitheater, the circus know this also had several races with just horses Lady Bethany mused wrinkling her brow maybe I am getting them confused Bethany Bethany the racecourse. Where they bet on horses the Ascot is in Berkshire, the Asilias Royal Amphitheater in London is where the circus runs and they do have men performing tricks on the back of horses running in circles. Lady Bethany and Lady Brenna burst out laughing. We were both wrong I can't believe I they got the two mixed up Lady Bethany said you re not the only one I love the circus better than the racetrack Lady Brenna revealed that s. Because you never liked betting on the horses said Lady Bethany with a smug scold in her voice we can't do everything in one trip ladies the ask it the Royal Amphitheater Circus the Almac S pick and choose ladies pick and choose. Lady Brenda and Lady Bethany said together the undertone and the Almac S. They rode into downtown London into the Soho district, where they purchased vouchers into the Almagas evening ball. Randolph grinned I happen to know one of the seven patronesses of society here he grinned Lady Brenna threw her arms around Duke Randolph Lawrence and hugged him you re so full of surprises I love you for your surprises Lady Bethany held the voucher to tonight's ball in her hand and stared at it this is the ball of balls and I am invited Duke Randolph agreed yes you are invited. Lady Bethany. Lady Bethany thought off her mixed feelings every move Randolph made in her favor pushed her further away from his younger brother but they were in London and set off to find the exchange building where Sterling Upshaw and the Underton resided. Chapter 4 Exchange Building Downtown London London England Early Afternoon Wednesday June 19, 1816 Lady Brenda stretched her arms I hope Duke Drake doesn't he take your absence to hard Bethany he gave us five days and this is only day for Lady Bethany Grin men should wait for a woman they desperately want she chuckled as if not having a care in the world Randolph turned to Lady Brenna flashing her a look of concern to Drake isn't he someone to trifle with he has a temper. If Ella being in the hospital is any indicator I am so sick of hearing about men as temper. Lady Bethany said in a louder voice carrying out of the carriage and into the London streets what about a woman as temper? I am angry to be in this situation now my sister and I have to deal with this s s s s s s s h h h h h Lady Brenna said to her sister you've got no right to be angry with the London underton what mean thing have they done to you? Randolph nodded Bethany we re here to get a quick loan if push comes to shove I l l help you pay it back he waved his hand dismissively I know you don't you want me interfering Brenna but I am going to marry you one way or another oh you two lovebirds stop it let us get going and see the death in finances group. The three of them entered the London Exchange building no matter how long they scurried their eyes over the long list of business interest in the building they never saw anything listing the underton finally Lady Bethany said we must ask someone no said Lady Brenna absolutely not cautioned Randolph Lawrence a fan and girl breaking the attention of the three and a voice spoke how can I help you said Jennifer Miller in her black empire dress and bonnet and shoes I returned from the funeral oven. Old friend forgive my dress I l l escort you to the underton she whispered the last part her fan held open for a sign showed the two golden crossed swords. When Jennifer was assured they saw it she promptly closed her fan. 
Following behind the hourglass figure of Jennifer Lady Brenna raised her hands over Randolph's fixated blue eyes Lady Bethany rolled her eyes at Randolph's fascination Every woman has curves Randolph we hall sisters prefer our curves On the conservative side Lady Brenna chimed in makes it easier to wear more dress styles Ha 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 laughed Jennifer Miller as she walked the three up the steps she turned around to face them before taking another step her voice was light and sweet and hung in the air seconds. Afterward in Regency you re in Empire Dress 1 or Empire Dress 2 or Empire Dress 3 now bonnets and fans are where the real fashion statements are she resumed walking up the ivory steps onto a floor Lady Bethany Lady Brenna and Randolph never saw mentioned on the listing. Jennifer Miller opened the door and held it open for them all three walked onto the cool floor and looked both ways left and right this way your right end of the hall Jennifer Miller smiled I am glad to make your acquaintance. Lady Brenna Lady Bethany both wearing white to hope and impress on the underton they were good girls in a bad situation walked down the hall that seemed to be dimmer and dimmer. As they went the offices to the left and right held light but not bright as the center office staring them in the face Randolph reached into his black waistcoat pocket for something checked it and returned his hands to his sides. As Lady Brenna reached to open the door a man her same height clean shaven thin wearing a throne d'armor cravat with the singular dent in the middle of the knot opened the door she looked around and noticed all the men wore throne d'armor cravat nodding this must be the sign of the men of the London underton. As the golden crossed swords on Jennifer S. Van was a women sign of the London underton. Men in black pants and white shirts and thrown d'armor cravats scurried about from one wooden desk to another leaning over and whispering figures or accounts on a huge whiteboard were the shires of England. Every shire of England is listed on the board said Lady Bethany we do a healthy business Lady Bethany. Both hall ladies gasped. Do not be surprised Jennifer Miller is very through in whom she spoke with and directed to our offices he flashed a professional smile his bright white teeth perfect matched the white starch of his throne d'armor cravat my name is Sterling Upshaw I am the man who gives out the, the loans under ton loans we do not charge an exorbitant interests considering we re dealing with some of the wealthiest families in England Sterling talked as he escorted them to a big brown desk covered with a thick plate of glass. Cleared of any paperwork except for the lower right corner he on a cue from a man on his right removed the top paper and placed it in bottom drawer. Sterling did not appear to do much of anything but sales he motioned his hand to the three chairs before his big brown desk the golden lamp remained lit. As much light streamed in from the open golden draped curtains scattered about the room Lady Brenna Lady Bethany and Duke Randolph sat down Lady Brenna began to speak but Sterling raised his right hand suddenly I don't think I can offer you the low Lady Brenna as you don't need the low Lady Bethany needs the loan I need the loan. Lady Bethany spoke up at once but I have nothing to offer for the loan I disagree you see I am looking for a life you've got a very good heritage the halls I admit I am only a count count sterling upshaw but you be exactly the woman I like someone with class pluck and a love for taking risk Lady Bethany at first smiled she loved the idea of a man wanting her because of her talents for gambling taking risk and while not following the rules then suddenly Suddenly she thought about Jeffrey I can't he count up shy and flattered don't he get me wrong but I am going to marry Jeffrey Lawrence Jeffrey Lawrence Randolph intervened my brother doesn't he know it his brother does know it but they cannot get married because I met Randolph first lady Brenna said with a smear to her younger twin sister my older twin sis sometimes forget her obligation not to marry until I marry first Sterling Upshot slapped his hands on his big brown desk once he leaned back in his big black office chair then it is settled I can give you the $10,000 loan on your promise to marry me what? 
Lady Bethany gasped the shock yet her hard feeling faint she held onto the two arms on her chair leaning over briefly to her sister Brenna did I hear right? I avoided Mary Duke to Mary account? There must be some misunderstanding, perhaps from the message delivered from Miss Miller to you count up shy my younger twin sister doesn't he want to be married she only wants to secure a loan for ten thousand dollars count up shy's face narrowed and grew solemn you are not attending balls to find a husband lady Bethany. Well yes of course all single ladies attend balls to find a husband and you of course cannot marry Jeffrey Lawrence because of the Catholic rules against double in law marriage. The elder sibling gets first choice in nearly all things ton I mean you can people marry their cousins we restrict Catholics replied Lady Brenda upright Lady Bethany slowly replied I mean not in England so you do not want to find a husband Lady Bethany. Though I was mistaken I do apologize I can grant the loan on the condition you pay the money back in 30 days his face hardened and showed absolute coldness 30 days Duke Randolph exclaimed that as highway robber and at these interests prices he pointed to the interest under the huge glass on top of the big brown desk the interest paper he could not get to. If he wanted to count Sterling you are not the only man interested in my younger twin sister's marriage potential but a higher offer has come in from a doot doot right turn dual Sterling shook his head back and forth in disbelief you can t be serious you want your younger sister put count up Shaw started whispering you want your twin sister put into the hospital for a you. No I do not count up Shaw I merely mentioned this to see if you have any counteroffer perhaps a lower interest rate? Can't he change the interest rate no one would respect us. If we lowered our interest rates you see this is a business a good business counts Sterling Upshaw emphasized by leaning forward and pointing to his empty glass covered big brown desk he pointed to all the men scurrying about I beg got loans coming in by the hour from all over I am a wealthy man don't he misjudge me by my title. As Count I can marry you Count Sterling you settle my debt with Duke Turnbull and I will marry you. Count up Shaw's face brightened quickly he stood up and clasped his hands together I will settle your account with Duke Turnbull and you will marry me this weekend. A knock came at the door. Come in said Sterling Jennifer Miller opened the door with a chagrin look on her face in burst Jeffrey Lawrence Jennifer Miller closed the door again Jeffrey s deep voice filled Sterling s office Randolph how dare you trick me into believing Lady Bethany was going to marry Duke Drake? What happened brother? said Randolph looking at Jeffrey s right black eye I went to his Turnbull manor and confronted him we thought I lost but I got in a few good licks before he told me you went to London to secure an underton loan probably Lady Bethany Jeffrey went over to her chair and stood there shaking I want to let you marry anyone but me I love you I don't you love Lady Felony what she did to you causing you to go and do that for ten thousand dollars was deplorable I called off our relationship I want to go with you to America Lady Bethany be damn these ton rules and customs. Lady Bethany leaked up and hugged Jeffrey I knew you come for me one day like my knight in shiny armor. How I love you Jeffrey Lady Bethany smothered Jeffrey with several kisses he held her back at arm's length for a second staring at her heart shaped face her cupid bow lips and that sculpted nose he pulled her to his oval face and planted a long serious kiss on her lips I don't care Randolph Lady Brenda you're not going to make me give her up the two stood side by. Side daring any objections Jeffrey, if you read going to America then go Randolph's pat go as soon as possible leave England. Lady Brenda eyes teared up and she reconsidered her objections to their marriage now get married you too but what about the loan Jeffrey pulled out a check he placed it on Count Sterling up shot s desk give her the loan this check will pay the loan and the interests. 
Count Sterling S. I. Swiden never in my life has this happened a man showing his devotion and love for his woman in cash Count Sterling swept up the check immediately he placed it back down on the desk he snapped his fingers and one of the throne the armor cravat men brought a stack of bills and placed it on Count Sterling S. glass desk Count Sterling slowly slid the 10,000 over to Lady Bethany then Count Sterling swept up the check from Jeffrey Lawrence once again I believe that concludes our business. Gentlemen and ladies count up sorrows from his seat, as if this sort of thing happened every day. Randolph Rose Lady Brenner Rose still in shock Lady Bethany Hutt Jeffrey Jeffrey I was afraid to ask you for the money, forget about it it is done darling Bethany now we need to get packing for America. As they walked out of Count Sterling's office Lady Bethany said I guess this means I never go to the Almagas or the Royal Circus or the Ascot Racetrack so lot of it Bethany I L L I you a racetrack in America I L L take you to see the circus in America and you L L be a painting landscape aristocrat in America oh Jeffrey. Lady Bethany in Jeffrey's carriage pulled up to turn to manor she got out and walked to the front door Lady Brenna and Randolph Lawrence and Jeffrey watched she knocked on the door and it opened. Duke Turnbull had a swollen nose his voice sounded weak he wheezed as he talked so here is the woman who turns boys into fighting men take your money Drake all ten thousand dollars of it you secured and under ton loan you l l never hear the end of them one payment missed and bang they l l be all over your estate got be under ton loan and paid it off the same day courtesy of my future husband Jeffrey Lawrence Duke Drake chortled briefly and stopped in pain he cleared his throat and wheezed you, you can't he marry your brother, if your sister is marrying Randolph the eldest ton sibling get their choice in such disputed matters I never follow the rules and neither does Jeffrey we re heading to America to live and get married I hope to never see you again Duke Drake turned to Lady Bethany sauntered up his long pristine walkway and back into Jeffrey's black broom carriage only thing left to do is for me to pack and catch the H S Atlantic to America Jeffrey waved the two. Shipping tickets we still have time to catch it tonight. Lady Brenna and Duke Randolph waved from the pier Lady Bethany wore a light green Spencer jacket over her white empire dress it was night and the two lovers aboard the H.S. Atlantic waved their ticket heads barely visible Jeffrey's male coach Cravet and Lady Bethany's white bonnet and empire dress marked them from the crowd I am going to miss my younger twin sister Lady Brenna said she sniffled and white tears from her blue eyes on her white arm Opera gloves I am going to have to change gloves, if we. We're going to go to the Almagas tonight. Randolph stood motionless holding back showing any tears his eyes stared wide, as if something might happen and indeed it was his younger brother of one year sailed away today and probably would never return I am going to miss Jeffrey he always did keep up with the world and shunned traditions and customs it is for the best. Lady Brenna turned to Randolph hugged him and she sobbed on his shoulders Randolph we drove them away all because of customs we drove them into the hands of happiness and peace Lady Brenna so at least we read half right no matter what land our kin resides America as a new place making new traditions it is truly the best place for those two rule breakers. The ship's horn blew one last time for all to board Lady Bethany and Jeffrey waved again before walking to their quarters and beginning their new life. I never thought this would happen Lady Bethany said you made my dream come true you held out fighting against everyone after Lady Felony's treatment of you I decided to never follow a tradition again I liked her but my heart resided with yours Bethany we were destined and fated to be together don't you look back because I am not looking back and I have enough money for both of us to live. As rich Americans and the first thing I want you to do is go to your studio and paint. Paint paint and paint do not worry about feeding me just paint 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 until you become a famous woman landscape painter. 
Lady Bethany cried she sobbed on Jeffrey's shoulders I want to let you down Jeffrey I promise to be the best woman landscape artist in America or one of them, and after I am famous Jeffrey we hell hell have children I don't care, if I am 30 I want to be afraid to have our children at least two of them. Chapter 5 Thames Dock Downtown London London England Early Evening Wednesday June 19, 1816 As the anchor rose and locked the H.S. Atlantic began to sail away Lady Brenna burst out into tears again I hell hell never see my younger twin sister again she s gone Randolph they are gone Lady Brenna buried her coiffured brunette head into a Randolph's shoulders as he tried hard to remain a rock of solid support I know I know it hurts Brenna but apart those two lived miserable lives Randolph consoled, as his own tears threatened to overflow his blue eyes the thing is you and I both know. They re happier now, together. Lady Brenna hated her underhanded plan to take Bethany to the underton meeting and insisting she wear the white dress to affect the virgin look it made things worse. Count Sterling up shop proposed this reminded Bethany of her true forbidden love Jeffrey the color white only reminded Bethany if when she painted the landscape on the side of Hall Estates and bloodied her teacup knees her greatest disaster in their family history now sadly the color white symbolized the breakup of the remaining Hall clan split by a huge ocean. Thousands of miles apart, Bethany in America and Brenna herself in Dover Camp, England. Lady Brenna raised her head and watched the passenger ship H.S. Atlantic growing smaller and smaller all of the great times she and Bethany enjoyed together, as children came flooding back to her the times at the Aska Racecourse, when she Bethany and their mom won $5,000 on a 22-1 horse named Trouble wins the time when both girls first attended the opera and fainted over the same unattainable male star whom all the females in the theater wanted at the same time especially the time when both girls put on their first pair of dance slippers and snapped the rubber bands in place. I won't have anyone to go shopping with at the exchange anymore Randolph no more lazy days sitting out in the formal garden reading oversized landscape painting and fashion books you have me Brenna I must be good for something, even though I am male he quipped she retrieved a handkerchief please not to be alone crying on the dock lady Brenna looked around see Randolph other women agree with me men are not the same. As women men don't he understand fashion or the emotional nuisance of the theater. She chuckled I understand the emotional nuisance of theater Brenna but someone has to act like they re not affected by artifice someone else must validate the other person s need to show emotion that s stupid Duke Randolph Lady Brenna said recovering pulling herself together that is akin to saying one twin is a reflection of the other no two twins are alike not ever Randolph still Brenna you may not appreciate my ease at this moment but you would if Jeffrey and I were twins I lived in fear of meeting Lady Bethany one day at a ball or one night in a dark room and believing she was you really you can't he tell us apart Lady Brenna gasped at this sudden revelation Duke Randolph chuckled and comfortably I never could Brenna I simply waved to the first hall woman I saw and luckily Lady Bethany hated waving back to anyone at all he flashed a straight line grin offended Lady Brenna snapped back I have a tiny black mole behind my left ear Bethany does not Lady Brenna show her future husband her left ear I have a slightly bigger toe than my younger twin sister Lady Brenna took off her right white slipper shoe held it in one hand and held her foot in the other hand showing it to Randolph and my kneecaps are not scrapped up from painting a crazy landscape masterpiece on the side of our house but don't you dare ask me to show my knees in public Lady Brenna was furious all this time the man she wanted to marry found telling her apart from her younger twin sister impossible of all the stupid things men were useless utterly without scruples and morals thank god she never let the two of them Bethany and Randolph out of her sight for one second over the years I wanted to ask you ask you how to tell you two apart.
Really I did but the embarrassment crushed me every time I kept thinking about funny plays and stories where no one knew who anyone was and what woman married a man who failed to know his bride on sight. If you cannot tell me apart from anyone else let me know Randolph I L L show you how I am different most women are about 5 feet 5 inches Lady Brenna gasped to think I need to follow and watch who you talk to for the rest of our lives I am not blind Brenna now stop it he flashed a half grin and then chuckled Lady Brenna laugh relaxing a bit I will I have Lady Brenna laughed. They had come on we have a big evening ahead of us Duke Randolph grabbed Lady Brenna's left hand and they casually walked to his broom carriage water lapped at the pier and the sound of the H.S. Atlantic steaming down the river reminded them their mission was over Lady Brenna said I am a little nervous though about the Almac as Randolph waved his hand dismissively forget about whom is important think only about our love love we can now concentrate on Duke Randolph's suddenly stopped and pulled Lady Brenna to himself abruptly and kissed her heart on the lips you are very amorous tonight said the surprised Lady Brenna I am free you are free this is the beginning of our new marriage life he did a little pyramid and spin you and I are going to love the Almac S. Lady Brenna hoped Randolph knew what he was doing one slip up by him or her and those seven society patronesses could destroy their ball dancing entertainment they did have to travel to France. If either one of them slipped up for herself she felt secure Randolph never really matched her skill maybe it was a female thing to be a better dancer. Before they stepped into their carriage they noticed a few men with drawn the armor cravats following two gentlemen casually walking ahead with gold head walking sticks wearing their black coat and tails Duke Randolph pointed them out I noticed it too replied Lady Brenna quietly. Randolph had his coachman wait. The two Tron D'Armor Crevette men rushed up and grabbed the taller gentleman on the left hay rough and cried the shorter gentleman this is none of your affair said a third Tron D'Armor Crevette man approaching from the opposite direction no no the taller gentleman cried out forgot about us have you said one of the underton men hitting the taller man on the head with a trunch and the two underton gentlemen pushed the taller gentleman into a black broom carriage riding up fast stopping as it. Door opened all three gentlemen got inside the carriage and it abruptly rode off the third underton gentleman stared hard as he walked away at the shorter friend of the taller gentleman. Duke Randolph and Lady Brenna watched the event in horror the underton men were ruthless thank god your younger brother paid them off seconds. After he took that underton loan it was a far smarter move than I conceived of Lady Brenna commented Randolph the smaller gentleman turned around and picked up his collapsible black opera hem and the black opera hem of his taller disappeared friend he turned to Randolph and Lady Brenna but they simply start ahead looking at each other. Now Randolph gave a double knock. And his coachman started slowly to drive off no one said anything. Randolph let us give our two extra Almac S tickets to someone charity. He smoothed out his pencil mustache alright keep in mind we cannot upset the social order not just anyone can get the tickets oh that ass right, I thought, Lady Brenna S face became serious and solemn again her happiness persuaded her perhaps a little too much one faux pas not exactly one but we can't go around making mistakes Brenna especially, now that you are basically free from any scandal. As am I, now that our younger siblings are gone across the ocean we can give them back to the society patroness Randolph she can give them to whomever she wants. King Street bustled with people from all the shires of London black broom carriages and a few burlines waited in a long line around the block from the Almac S. Lady Brenna and Duke Randolph pulled up beside the entrance out of her element Lady Brenna didn't he know anyone Randolph said several hellos and chatted about stocks politics for a second before excusing himself to escort Lady Brenna inside. Why Duke Randolph I see you finally decided to grace us with a visit said the head patroness of society who put on the ball and you brought your wife. 
How sweet Randolph introduced Lady Brenna to the important society patroness I wish we were married but not yet continued Duke Randolph and smiled not wanting to embarrass the important society patroness we have two extra tickets my brother and her sister were planning to attend but love intervened Randolph handed the tickets back to the patroness as she flashed. A big smile and her happy voice said on oh dear can you run and give this to the Earl and Lady Adrian Highsmith they so wanted to attend and you know the tickets are limited the nearly bald headed doorman scuffled off quickly outside and Lady Brenna watched him examine the crowd outside. Until he found the couple he escorted them back inside the society patroness said Earl and Lady Adrian Highsmith I want you to meet Duke Lawrence and Lady Brenna who so graciously gave up their extra Almagas tickets that you might attend the Earl and Lady Adrian Highsmith nodded we appreciate the gift we read from Devon and we are glad such a long trip has not been for naught the Highsmiths went inside the light grey decorated ballroom where nearly 500 chairs sat around the wall for attendees I am disappointed Randolph I so wanted to meet Lady Brenna's high spirited sister Bethany and your brother Jeffrey Lady Bethany and Jeffrey had a pressing engagement in America at the last second said Lady Brenna they both wanted to attend the Almac S is the place to be on a Wednesday night during the season indeed it is the society patroness's voice had the ring of soprano and the joviality of a circus announcer as I understand the plucky lady Bethany paints landscapes yes she did she does I paint landscapes too Although I never painted on the side of the elm I guess the society patroness went on showing her grasps of social gossip from the shires of England but from what I hear Bethany is much better than most that is true Lady Brenna found herself relieved and forced to admit her younger twin did indeed have a special talent she s going to America to focus on landscape painting the society patroness threw back her long black hair and chortled I do love a true love story as I know the tongue does as well she pronounced it tome and said the word comes from the French for tome we read all about tome or style I hope they do well Miss Violet Collier asked me to tell the Lady Bethany to look her up once they get to New York the important society patroness gave a knowing nod to show how important the communication was Bethany made the right decision in turning down Duke Turnbull's offer since Lady Turnbull's divorce finally went through this week all of us have rallied around Dowager Ella Turnbull in these difficult times Feeling like the interrogation and approval process ended Lady Brenna and Duke Randolph nodded and entered the large grey ballroom with its two chandeliers neoclassical marble floor and columns painted on the walls the doorman announced them. As they entered the elm I guess proper the Duke Randolph and Lady Brenna of Kent. Lady Brenna Hall exclaimed we re in you said it Brenna I thought her bedding process would never end you think we ll make the first tier of dancers Lady Brenna asked as they made their way to the refreshment tables. I don't he know you re far better than me at dancing anyway shall we check the list? Lady Brenna wanted to make the first tier not so much to prove she danced well but that she was accepted Randolph pointed look Brenna Jennifer Miller we should go give our thanks said Duke Randolph as he and Lady Brenna started to make his way through the tongue crowd from all of England. Hi Jennifer Lady Brenna started out having put out of her mind the additional duties of the woman I want to sincerely thank you for your information tip yes her twin sister Lady Bethany and my brother Jeffrey are happily on their way to America Jennifer laughed and no one in the room so much as stared not a one I am simply a messenger to the worried tongue the intense love story about those two shook us all to the core the undertone crowd such passion normally resides in romance novels. Lady Brenna agree the world always needs more love 
Love shows us the meaning of life. Love helps us to fight for the true things. Jennifer raised her drink to her pink lips. She sipped and paused those worries. In your blue eyes no longer appear. Lady Brenna chortled, feeling comfortable in the woman ass presence. At last all those worries moved across the ocean. Now all I look forward to is getting married and settling down and rearing children. Nodding Jennifer Miller agreed all we want is security and... An honest steward to manage our affairs Lady Brenna found that statement on she turned around and whispered to Randolph do you see a steward in the elm I guess? Randolph looked to Jennifer who gave a weak smile steward steward he realized looking for a steward wasn't he what Lady Brenna meant at all the society patronesses steward I do happen to know him I l l introduce you to him Jennifer perhaps after the ball? Jennifer waved her gold cross sword fan before her face her blue eyes widened in delight you have a perceptive future husband replied Jennifer Miller to Lady Brenna he is efficient in dealing with people not present Lady Brenna quipped. Duke Randolph blushed Jennifer laughed twins can be rather difficult to tell apart if you don't he observed the details as long as he waved first to us or one of us Randolph did find telling us apart. Jennifer saw a hand raised in her direction and promptly left can you imagine that marriage? Randolph said humorously saleswoman for the underton and the steward to the elm I guess Randolph who can't stop money from loving money? I think you knock love Brenda simply to see me react someone said Don T knock love just love with all your heart you know I respect love I am the kin of respecting love but you always try to make it seem like I have no clothes on Lady Brenna gave a teetering laugh but when you make love dear Randolph you re not supposed to be wearing clothes Duke Randolph replied I suppose a naked heart is an asset naked heart naked bodies just love me with all your heart Randolph. Brenna what do you think I am trying to do here? Trying to spare me the embarrassment of not making the first tier dancers Randolph grinned I have a surprise. For you he pointed the society patroness making the announcement her soprano circus volume voice carried all throughout the gray huge ballroom people stood before their chairs many of them often danced the first tier in their respective England shires but the elm I guess was a whole different race course Duke William and Duchess Sarah Alcott Marquis John and Marchioness Thayla Driscoll Duke Randolph Lawrence and Lady Brenna Hall. The society patroness called out three more names but Lady Brenna didn't he hear a one Randolph you really are ton only the best for my girl now you l l really have to show off because these are good dancers Lady Brenna hugged Randolph I am a little nervous Randolph Duke Randolph tossed back his head and laughed nonsense imagine all the people here are circus performers that will relax you and the lion in the circus is he caged or free she retorted I don't he know but if you read dancing in the herd he won't he notice you Randolph whispered Duke Randolph and Lady Brenna took their third positions in the first tier of dancers at the Elm I guess the music began the tongue crowd of non-dancers watched anxiously all the drama of dancing at the Elm I guess turned the first dance into something of a spectacular occasion all the new faces dancing the first tier were noted and remembered. The first couple began to dance Lady Brenna noticed the society patroness watching her and Randolph the society patroness light blue eyes clashed against her long black hair she was a bit overweight but stylishly dressed in a white red empire dress and black dance slipper shoes her male partner and older gentleman with stark white hair on his head mustache and beard looked regal and calm Lady Brenna tried to find the couple they gifted Bethany and Jeff SL Mike voucher to but the second couple was dancing now. Randolph nodded to Lady Brenna. 
She wiped her sweaty hands on her white empire dress and adjusted the white bandeau over her brunette fine hair. She starred back across the ballroom space of one couch wide waiting and gave a tiny wave from her lower waist to her future husband and he absolutely certainty of which twin she was confidently waved back rose on his toes and one step skipped two stepped out toward her he grabbed Lady Brenna's left hand as they pirouetted up out into the center of the ballroom before all the eyes of the ton and perform the first spire of the country dance without any flaws hesitations or doubts you redoing great randolph whispered s s s s s s h h h lady brenna said the society patroness is watching our every move as they danced back to back they one step two step skip step toward each other and back they turn back to back again and then perform their ballet movements hell steps out as they turned around holding hands again they came together broke apart and danced a square all the times lady brenna remained on her toes light and easy skipping free happy with joy to be free romantically to love duke randolph without an ounce of guilt they continued to impress everyone at the Almagas during their first year dance and the subsequent dances the society patroness pressed them into joining in all of their time slipped by faster than expected and finally the night ended. You two magnificently represented Kempshire I want you to come back anytime Duke Randolph and Lady Brenna but Randolph I expect her to be a duchess. When you return the society patroness teetered in her Sofrano Circus volume voice allowing all in the Almagas to see I don't he knock her love, I just love her with all my heart Randolph replied Lady Brenna threw her arms around Duke Randolph just love me Randolph tonight and tomorrow we can't get married so soon? You know how competitive twin sisters can be. Friday June 21st 1816 Duke Randolph and Lady Brenna got married at St. James Church in a small ceremony of family and friends they went home to Lawrence Manor to celebrate and romantically share their love for two days. When they emerged from seclusion they found their names splashed all over the society page as the new darlings of the Almagas. You look really serious dancing Lady Brenna commented no I don't you look as happy and free as you look Duchess Brenna Duchess Brenna waved her hand dismissively I was thinking about my younger twin sister all the time funny I was thinking about her to that s why you waved to me when we got on the dance floor guilty conscience I saw your mole behind your ear on our wedding night I married the right girl to love with all my heart and I married the perfect duke who can't stop waving to me so I don't he have to wave back during romantic moments. The end.